Hey friends, welcome back to the Blueprint Nursing YouTube channel. My name's Nicole, and today we're going to talk about insulin administration. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Insulin is a hormone made by our pancreas that regulates our blood glucose levels. When a client is diagnosed with diabetes, their pancreas may have trouble secreting insulin. So these clients may require insulin to be administered through subcutaneous injections. There are four types of insulins that are characterized by their onset and duration of action. These four types are rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. Okay, let's talk about each type. Rapid acting insulins like Lispro are so fast because they're the pro of insulin. Get it? Lispro? Pro? These start working within 15 minutes, peak at one to two hours, and last three to five hours. They're typically given right before meals. Short acting insulin, like regular insulin, is not as fast as rapid acting insulin. It starts working within 30 to 60 minutes, peaks out two and a half hours, and lasts eight hours. Intermediate acting insulin, like NPH insulin, is, you guessed it, longer lasting and more so used for regulation of blood glucose levels rather than correction of blood glucose levels. Something to note about intermediate acting insulin is that it's cloudy in appearance. Remember to roll the vial or pen prior to use. It starts working within one to two hours, peaks at eight hours, and lasts 16 hours. Long-acting insulin, like insulin detamir, is exactly as it says. It's long-acting. It starts working within one to two hours, but these insulins don't have a peak effect, and they last 24 hours. Okay, now that we've got the different types of insulin down, let's talk about how to administer them. Insulin is commonly administered by subcutaneous injection. The common sites for administration are the abdomen, upper thighs, upper buttocks, and the back of the upper arms. All right, let's move on. We'll start with how to administer insulin using a vial and syringe. Draw the air into the syringe equal to the insulin dose and inject the air into the insulin vial. Then withdraw the prescribed amount of insulin into the syringe. Select your injection site and cleanse the skin with an alcohol swab. Lightly grasp the area of skin and insert the needle at a 90 degree angle. Remember, we're injecting into the subcutaneous tissue. Once the needle is in, push the plunger down completely to administer the insulin dose. After you've administered the insulin, release the skin. Pull the needle straight out and dispose of the needle and syringe per protocol. This will likely be a sharps container at the bedside. Now, let's talk about administering insulin using an insulin pen. Insulin pens are preloaded with insulin and can be easier to use in syringes. You're going to attach the pen needle onto the pen, then you'll prime the needle by dialing the pen to two units, pointing the needle upward, and pressing the inject button until a drop of insulin appears. Once primed, dial the number of units needed and check the dose window for the correct dose. Just as with a vial and syringe, we'll choose the injection site, lightly grasp the skin, and insert the needle at a 90 degree angle. Press the dosing knob slowly to fully administer the insulin. Hold the pen in place for a few seconds, then withdraw. Once removed, replace the outer needle cap, remove the needle from the pen, and dispose of the pen needle per protocol. Clients may have orders to combine insulins for better glucose control and to reduce the number of injections needed to achieve it. Generally, short-acting insulins and intermediate-acting insulins are combined. For cases of mixing insulins, follow the clear before cloudy rule. When you draw your insulin doses, pull up the clear regular insulin into the syringe first, and then draw the cloudy intermediate acting insulin into the same syringe. Drawing up the cloudy insulin last prevents from accidentally contaminating the clear vial. At the end, you should have both insulins in the same syringe. All right, friends, that's insulin types and administration for you. Let's do a quick question to go a little beyond what we reviewed. You ready? What medication counteracts the effects of insulin? Pause here and answer when you're ready. Okay, the answer is glucagon. Great job. Here's the material we used to make this review. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe to Blueprint Nursing's channel to keep up with the latest video and check out our live study group options. See you next time.